okay uh, let us start the class so uh, in previous class we have discussed about basic about the vertical alignments and vertical alignments are generally composed of gradients and curves okay so in vertical curves there are two types of curve summit curve and valley curve now uh, before uh, discussing about the summit curve and valley curve that is length of summit curve and valley curve uh, let us uh, discuss about the effect of centrifugal force on the summit and valley curve that is on the vertical curves so so basically this is a summit curve now whenever a vehicle is moving over a summit curve in that case what happen centrifugal force will act on the vehicle and the action of the centrifugal force that is the direction of the centrifugal force is always outward direction okay now weight of the vehicle is also acting in the downward direction so for this reasons what happen whenever a vehicle is traversing through a summit curve in that case part of the vehicle weight or component of the vehicle weight is counteracted by the centrifugal force okay so for this reason the pressure exerted on the vehicle tires and axle would be lower than the normal condition for this reason whenever a vehicle travels in a summit curve in that case passengers generally feels comfortable okay now the main problem so therefore comfort condition is not a main problem for the summit curve okay and for this reason in the design of summit curve there is no need for transition curve but the main problem in the summit curve is your side distance okay whenever a vehicle is there it cannot observe any object which would be in the downstream portion so the main problem in the summit curve is side distance now for this reason whenever you are designing a summit curve in that case you need to design it design it for the purpose of side distance provisions okay and this side distance provision may be uh, you can design for the stopping side distance or overtaking side distance now as stopping side distance is very fundamental for this reason so whenever you need to design a summit curve in that case at least you have to provide stopping side distance that is you need to uh, design the length of the summit curve considering the stopping side distance now if further spaces are available if further uh, accommodations can be made in that case you can go for the overtaking side distance consideration now coming to the uh, length of summit curve so whenever you are designing a summit curve considering the stopping side distance in that case two condition exist so first condition is whenever your length is greater than stopping side, side distance and second condition is when your length is smaller than stopping side distance so basically before calculating the length of the summit curve these two assumptions you have to make so first assumption is your length is greater than stopping side distance so in that case there are some formulas so for suppose when length is greater than shd in that case this formula is there 
your stopping set uh, your length of the summit curve is n s square divided by 4.4 okay now the thing is suppose you have calculated the length considering this formula so after getting the length after getting the length if you found that whatever assumption you have made that assumption is incorrect in that case you have to go for the second case okay so for these reasons there are two cases when length is greater than sht and another condition is whenever length is smaller than sht so first you have to assume length is greater than sht and you have to find out what is the length if the length is uh, as per the assumption greater than sht okay this is okay now if you found that the length is smaller than sht in that case you have to go for the second assumption now coming to the derivation portion so in this uh, portion you just need to remember the formulas for this now here h1 and h2 h1 and h2 are the height of the driver's eye and height of the object okay here height of the driver's eye is 1.2 meter and height of the object is 0.15 meter n1 and n2 are the gradient okay so this is plus n1 and a negative gradient of minus n2 is meeting at a point and at this junct junction you need to provide a summit curve now capital n is deviation angle so deviation angle is nothing but deviation angle the difference between that would be n1 minus minus of n2 okay so that is n1 plus n2 Okay, so as per the first formula whenever your length is greater than SHD in that case this is your final equation that is L equal to N S square divided by 4.4 where S is nothing but the stopping side distance or side distance okay N is deviation angle and uh, L is the length of the summit curve now your second condition is when your length is smaller than SHT. Okay, in that case your final equation is L equal to 2S minus 4.4 by N. So these two conditions, okay, these two conditions are for the stopping side distance consideration one is for the uh, when uh, your length is greater than sht and another condition is whenever your length is smaller than sht so in this regard let us uh, solve one numerical that would be clear uh, so see the numerical a particle summit curve is formed by n1 equal to plus 3 percent and n2 equal to minus 5 percent design the length of the summit curve for v equal to 80 kilometer per hour so your design speed is provided so first is uh, you need to design the summit curve as per the stopping side distance consideration okay so first you need to calculate what is the stopping side distance so first what is your first task you need to 
convert the speed 80 km per hour into meter per second. So your V would be eighty into thousand divided by thirty six hundred meter per second. So calculate this. Okay, after that, you need to find out what is your stopping set distance. Okay, so uh, what is the formula for the stopping set distance? S is equal to Vt plus V square divided by 2gf. Now here, what is the value of f? The value of f is, consider the value of s is uh, 0 0.35 or you can refer one table which is provided in your previous classes f equal to 0 0.35 here uh, t is 2.5 second 2.5 second and g is 9.81 so calculate the uh, stopping side distance Okay, please calculate the stopping set distance below. Zero point zero eight nine. No, it should not be. What was the formula for the stopping set distance? The formula was V into T plus V square divided by 2 GF. Put the value over there.
127.44 just now it is correct so we have calculated the stopping side distance that is 127.44 meter or uh, like 128 meter so after that after that you need to assume that your length of the summit curve is more than the stopping side distance so uh, you can write that let us assume l is greater than SHD. okay now considering this way you have to find out what is the length using this formula that is your l equal to n s square divided by 9.6 now what is the value of n over there n is 8% or 0 0.08 okay so your length is 0 0.08 into L is zero point zero eight into one twenty eight or one twenty seven, whatever it is, square divided by nine point six. Okay, now uh, find out the value of L. One thirty-six point five. Uh, now tell me whether your first assumption is correct or not. Initially, you have assumed that your length of the summit curve is more than the stopping side distance. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, one thing. Okay, okay. Uh, there uh, we have done one mistake instead of uh, stopping side distance we have used uh, the formula for the overtaking side distance sorry for this uh, actually this should be the formula this should be the formula that formula you have uh, we have used uh, that was the formula for overtaking side distance so please calculate this again so here l is uh, 0 0.08 into 127 square or 120 square divided by 444. The previous one was mistake. That was basically formula for the overtaking side distance. So you will get a value of 297 or 298 like that. Uh, 298. Okay. So our first assumption was that length is greater than SHT. So after calculating the length, it is found to be more than stopping side distance. So whatever assumption we have made, that assumption was correct. Okay. So we do not have to move to second assumption now if in such cases if uh, such cases arises where whatever length you have found out that length happens to be smaller than the sht in that case only you have to go for the 
case number two. Okay, other than if it is uh, has to be correct for the case number one, in that case, that is your result. Uh, is it clear? Now, similarly, for the overtaking side distance also, if you consider for the overtaking side distance, in that case also, two considerations are there. Okay, for the uh, length of the summit curve. So, first one is whenever length is greater than OHT, and second case is whenever length is smaller than OHT. Similarly, two formulas are there. You have to put all these values in the formula. And prior to this, you have to calculate what is your overtaking side distance. Okay. After that, you put all these values and check in which assumption your result suited. So your first assumption always should be whenever length is greater than OHT. After that only, you can proceed with the next step. So is it clear? Summit curve. Okay. Now coming to the next portion that is Heli curve. Okay. Now, in the valley curve, actually, uh, how a valley curve would be? It would be like this. So, in the valley curve, what happens whenever a vehicle is traversing a valley curve, in that case, centrifugal force will be acting upward like that, and as well as the weight of the vehicle will also be acting in the downward direction for that case what will happen that the pressure exerted on the tires would be uh, more than the normal condition by tire and axle it would be more than the normal condition for this reason passenger will feel discomfort whenever traversing a heavy car okay so for this reason whenever you are designing a heavy car in that case it is required to design it as per the comfort condition of the users okay now in the valley curve side distance is not a problem because there are adequate side distance always available in the valley curve but the main problem is comfort condition and centrifugal forces and because of the centrifugal force only that comfort of the users is reduced so whenever you are designing a heli curve in that case comfort condition is uh, is the prior thing the another thing as the heli curve as in the heli curve comfort condition is very much important for these seasons whenever you are designing a heli curve that heli curve is only consist of transition curve okay it is only consist of transition curve. Now, as uh, we discussed, so first condition to uh, determine the length of the valley curve is comfort condition. Okay, so uh, for the comfort condition, the final formula to find out the length would be this one. 0.38 NP cube uh, to the power half if P is in kilometer per hour and this formula is valid whenever P is in meter per second okay this is the final formula so if you use this formula in that case you do not need to convert the P into uh, meter per second okay so this is the formula for P is in meter per second and this is for P is in kilometer per hour. Actually, you are using all this in meter per second, so better to uh, remember this formula. Okay, L is 2 NP cube divided by C to the power half. 
otherwise you will confuse uh, in which you should be meter per second which is kilometer per hour like that okay Now here, next condition, first one is for the comfort condition, then in the valley curve, uh, secondary condition is side distance, primary is always comfort condition, secondary is side distance. So for the secondary condition, similarly, you have the formula like that, case 1 and case 2, when L is greater than SST and when L is smaller than SST. So these are the formula. So nothing to discuss about here. Here n is your deviation angle and s is stopping side distance. Similarly, when l is smaller than SHD, in that case you have to use this formula. So uh, this ends this uh, chapter so is it clear Okay, now uh, let us discuss about your syllabus. So, is it feasible? Yes, syllabus. Okay, so there are total five units okay total five units you will get this syllabus in the ugc uh, uh, site that is basically ugc syllabus so basically we have completed module number one and today we have completed module number two i think highest uh, geometry design of the highways here we have finished introduction highway cross section and elements that was your camber, curve, and, and uh, that element. Then side distance element we have completed. Design of the horizontal alignment we have completed. Design of the vertical alignment that portion is uh, finished today. And design of the intersection basically that portion is common in this portion also. That is in module three. Design of road intersection. So we will cover this in this chapter. And numericals are associated with each and every uh, component of this chapter so i think we have also completed the numerical portions of this chapter so we have completed this two module okay so in our next class we we'll start with either with module number three or with module number four Uh, more example like uh, numerical examples okay numerical examples on uh, particle alignment Okay, okay. So,
Okay, can you see this problem? This one. Okay, let us try to solve this numerical. See the problem an ascending gradient ascending here ascending means positive and descending means negative so an ascending gradient of one in hundred one in hundred previously it was given as uh, percentage values now one in hundred meets a descending gradient of one in 120 a summit curve is to be designed for a speed of 80 kilometer per hour so as to have an overtaking side distance of 470 meters. Now, the good thing is here already overtaking side distance is given. Now, if the overtaking side distance was not provided in that case, you have to calculate what is the overtaking side distance. Okay. Now, another thing you need to remember, suppose uh, in calculating the overtaking side distance, only the design speed is given. You know in the overtaking side distance, there are two, type, two speeds. One is uh, VB, that is the uh, speed of the slower vehicle and another is the design speed. Suppose for any type of numerical, suppose in your exam or in the gate exam, suppose only the design speed is given. So in that case, how you will calculate the overtaking side distance because to uh, calculate the overtaking side distance your speed of the slower vehicle is also required in that case your overtaking side distance uh, uh, sorry in that case your speed of the slower vehicles would be design speed minus 16 kilometer per hour so that is your VB. VB is, is the speed of the slower vehicle is V in kilometer per hour minus 16. Okay, that would be in M th kilometer per hour. After that, you need to convert this in meter per second and you can proceed. Just remember this, this is uh, very important because in maximum uh, exam papers, your speed of the slower vehicles are not provided, okay, or will not be provided. Now here see, so an ascending gradient 1 in 100 meets with a descending gradient of 1 in 120. A summit curve is to be designed for a speed of 80 km per hour. So you can convert this speed and meter per second and you can proceed as we have discussed. So as to have an overtaking side distance of 470 meters. So your first thing is you need to calculate what is the deviation angle. So here deviation angle is 1 in 100 minus minus of 1 in 120 that is 11 divided by 600 now as per our formula for the summit curve whenever you are considering whenever length is greater than OST in that case that would be your length would be n into s square divided by 9.6 so your s is already given as 470 meter yes s is given as 470 meter so you just put this value and you will get a value of l as 422 meter I check whether you are getting the similar values or not 
because sometimes in the book uh, there are some printing mistakes and uh, calculation mistakes check whether you are getting the similar values So basically n n is 11 by 600 into 470 square divided by, uh, divided by 9.6 are you getting the same below Okay, 421.82. Now see one thing, here your overtaking side distance was 470 meter, but you are getting a value of 421.7 meter. So what does this mean? This means that whatever assumption you have made, that assumption was incorrect. Okay, so in this case, you have to go for the second assumption okay that your second assumption is your length is smaller than OST here it is OST L is lower than OST so by considering L is lower than S OST you have this formula okay and you put these values then you will get this length of the summit curve Okay, so are you getting this? How you will use this case one and case two? Is it clear? Okay. Okay, so based on this uh, total chapter that uh, we were discussing that module 2 module 2 so I'll give you some uh, assignment based on the numericals there will be only numericals nothing else numericals on uh, different component of this chapter assignment means uh, that you are uh, you will try to solve all these numericals okay if you feel feel any difficulty uh, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to submit all these things you just try to solve all this numerical okay now let me take your attendance 